In the last lecture, we have described the idea of equicontinuity of a subset of continuous functions from a space X to a metric space Y. And in this lecture, we will continue our uh, discussion of equicontinuity by considering its relationship with uh, the idea of total boundedness. So uh, remember that recall that a metric space or uh, rather a subset of a metric space subset A of a uh, metric space X XD uh, metric space is called uh, totally bounded if given any epsilon greater than 0 uh, there exists a finite cover finite cover of x with open epsilon balls in the metric d so we have seen for example that uh, metric space is compact uh, so this is the definition of uh, total boundedness and the important uh, theorem that we proved earlier was to show that a metric space metric space xd is compact if and only if um, it is x is complete and totally bounded for the metric uh, d so um, we see that uh, compactness is closely related to totally boundedness and uh, in this um, lecture we see we will see the close relationship of total boundedness and equicontinuity and by this theorem um, of compactness and equicontinuity and we will continue our discussion of equicontinuity and compactness of subsets of the set of uh, the space of continuous functions uh, in the next week's lectures when we discuss the arcella ascoli theorem um, which gives a complete characterization of compact subspaces of the space of continuous functions from x to y okay so these uh, preliminary uh, remarks aside let us discuss uh, two theorems uh, one is when uh, total boundedness implies equicontinuity and one is when equicontinuity implies total boundedness so our first theorem uh, describes a criteria when totally boundedness uh, of a subset of continuous functions from a given space x, a topological space x to a metric space y is uh, equicontinuous. So this is uh, total, uh, the, the idea of f being totally bounded under the uniform metric and then, then that implies equicontinuity. So here we have x a topological space, y d a metric space and a subset f of the set of continuous functions from x to y with, and the um, theorem says that if it is totally bounded under the uniform metric rho bar corresponding to d then f is equicontinuous, f is equicontinuous under the metric d on y. So remember that equicontinuity depended um, specifically on the chosen metric on the target space y and also recall here that recall that the um, the uniform metric rho bar on cxy was defined by the following uh, equation so we have for uh, f and g in cxy so actually we gave this metric on the set of all functions from x to y but we can uh, easily uh, restrict to the set of continuous functions for the moment and so we take two functions f and g which are continuous from x to y and then the rho bar metric the distance between f and g under the rho bar metric was given by the supremum of d bar fx gx says that x ranges 
So the supremum is taken over the set, all, set of all points in X. And here again the D bar metric between two points say Y1, Y2 in Y is the minimum of the distance between Y1 and Y2 um, with the D metric and the number 1. So this is this was the bounded metric. Uh, D bar is the bounded metric corresponding to D and rho bar is the uniform metric corresponding to uh, D via D bar. So let us prove the this theorem. So for the proof uh, we assume without loss of generality loss of generality that uh, we can choose we can choose uh, a, a positive number epsilon says that um, epsilon is less than 1. So uh, epsilon is chosen less than 1 and um, uh, this will so the term without loss of generality is quite commonly used in mathematics and it just says that if you restrict to a particular um, uh, uh, specific situation a specific case it does not affect the uh, general statement so you can still infer the uh, proof of the general statement from this particular case. So this will suffice to prove the general case because if we uh, prove equicontinuity uh, for epsilon less than 1 it will show equicontinuity for all epsilon. So um, let f be um, a subset a subset of the set of continuous functions which is totally bounded under um, the row bar metric under the uniform metric row bar and we will show that there exists so given a point given x naught in uh, x there exists a neighborhood u of x naught such that for all x in u and for all f in this set of continuous functions f we have that the distance uh, rather the uh, here I am taking the distance d rather than um, rather than d bar and this is where we will uh, use the fact that epsilon is less than 1 because when epsilon is less than 1 d bar is the same as d. So um, um, the distance between fx and f of x naught is less than epsilon. So we have to show this and this will show equicontinuity. So now um, to show this we fix a delta which is epsilon by 3 and uh, using uh, that f is totally bounded under the metric rho bar we have that there exists a finite cover of f uh, by uh, rho bar metric balls metric balls of radius delta um, so this means that this is equivalent to saying that there exists a finite set f1 f2 fn uh, this is a subset of the um, set of functions f that we have chosen such that um, f is a subset of the union of the metric balls with centers fi and radius delta 
under the row bar metric and uh, this union is over the finite set f1 to fn and this means that uh, so given any f in this set of functions f there exists a, an i belonging to the set of indices 1 to up to n such that a row bar of f fi is less than delta and notice that this means that the supremum of um, the distances between fx and fix for all x where the supremum is taken over all x in x is less than delta however this is less than 1 so uh, when the supremum is, is less than 1 uh, d bar is simply the same as d so this is the same as the supremum of d of fx fix says that uh, so the, again the supremum taken over all x says that this is less than delta so uh, we have uh, using the total boundedness of the uh, set f we have uh, chosen finitely many um, functions in this subset which uh, uh, when you take the row bar metric balls of radius delta the chosen radius delta then it covers this a finite cover of the set f so now uh, this means this means in particular that for example the set f1 f2 fn is equicontinuous being a finite set being a finite set and we have seen this before that a finite set of functions of continuous functions is equicontinuous and so uh, we have this implies that uh, there exists a neighborhood a u1 of x0 such that for all x in u1 and for all uh, f um, in this set of functions well, let me write for all i for all i in 1 2 up to n we have that um, the distance between f i x and f i x naught is less than um, delta so uh, we have used the equicontinuity of this finite set of functions f i and now we will also use the fact that um, any function is uh, any chosen function is continuous and now i claim that this neighborhood u1 will work for the, the um, definition of equicontinuity so i claim that given any f in this uh, set f for all x in u um, we have that the distance between fx and fx naught is less than um, epsilon so to show this to show this note that the again we will use the triangle inequality using our set of uh, functions fi here so this is less than or equal to d of fx fix plus d of fix fix naught plus d of f uh, i uh, f i x naught f x naught okay so we have broken it up into the three parts again and this holds for all i in the finite set of indices 1 2 up to n and now we will use the fact that the um, 
metric balls with, under the uniform metric with centers fi cover the whole um, set f so then then we have uh, that there exists an i belonging to the set 1 to let's say i naught up to n says that the rho bar distance between f and f i naught is less than delta so this is since f is a subset of the union uh, of all these uh, metric balls with centers f i and radius delta because of the total boundedness of f and we have seen that uh, this implies that the distance between uh, so for all x let me write here so this implies that for all x in uh, x the distance between fx uh, and fi not x is less than delta so uh, this implies that uh, so let me change the notation slightly so changing it to say um, x prime so that there is no confusion so this means that for all x in u1 and um, so uh, u1 also contains x naught in x we have that the distance between f x and f i naught x is less than delta the distance between f x naught and f i naught x naught is less than delta uh, so uh, this uh, inequality we have because we have the rho bar um, of f f i naught is the supremum of all the distances uh, between well with the d bar metric but um, so this is supremum is over all x in x and here we have chosen our radii to be less than 1 so we can always reduce to uh, d bar to d so uh, now um, we will use this fact and the fact that the fi's are equicontinuous so then uh, the from the from the triangle inequality here so we see that the first and the third um, terms in this inequality this is less than delta so uh, 1 and 3 less than delta by the total boundedness property and 2 is less than delta 2 is less than delta for all i uh, by equicontinuity so therefore uh, each of them is less than delta so there here we can conclude that the distance between fx and fx naught is less than dfx fi naught x naught uh, x sorry then we have uh, d of f i naught x f i naught x naught and d of f i naught x naught f x naught and uh, this is less than del uh, 3 delta which is epsilon because each of them is less than delta so this concludes our proof that uh, the subset f is equicontinuous under d now before we go on to the um, next theorem let me give a non example of equicontinuity meaning that a uh, family uh, f which is not equicontinuous so we consider f to be the family of sequences fn so here x equals um, 0 1 equals y these are y is a metric space in, in and in this case x is also a metric space and fn is a map from continuous map from x to y which is simply given by fn x equals x to the power n 
we have seen before that um, this sequence does not converge uniformly because the um, limit is not continuous and fn converges to the function f pointwise where f of x is given by is equal to 1 if x equal to 1 and 0 otherwise and I claim that f is is not equicontinuous and in fact we can say more which is that in particular f is not equicontinuous at uh, x equal to 1. So we have seen that um, x equal to 1 causes problems in the uniform convergence and uh, a similar kind of argument um, also uh, allows us to conclude that f is not in equicontinuous at x equal to 1. So suppose to the contrary that f is equicontinuous at, at 1 equicontinuous at x equal to 1. So this means that uh, given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a, a delta neighborhood um, of x equal to 1 says that for all um, r so let me call this delta neighborhood u so for all r in a u so this is since uh, this is a delta neighborhood of 1 this means that um, r must lie between 1 minus delta uh, and and 1 so 1 minus delta less than r less than or equal to 1 uh, we have for all f in f that the distance between f of r and uh, f of 1 is less than epsilon for all f in uh, we have already written that so for all f in f however f of 1 uh, so this is this uh, actually uh, this is this function f I have already written as the limit so let me use uh, a different notation so le let us use fn because this is our um, set f is made up of all these fn's so fn r and fn1 um, instead of f here so let uh, so notice that first of all that fn1 is equal to 1 and fn r is equal to r to the power n however we know that um, given r greater than 0 um, and so r bit strictly less than uh, 0 and 1 uh, r to the power n converges to 0 pointwise so uh, this means that so this is as n goes to infinity so this is simply saying that the limit of r to the power n as n goes to infinity is 0 and um, so we will use this so this means that um, given um, let's say another number eta because we've already used epsilon and delta so let us use another notation uh, eta greater than zero there exists a um, capital n says that r to the power n the modulus is less than eta for all n greater than or equal to capital n so uh, this means that um, r to the power n becomes smaller and smaller however we want uh, r to the power n to be very close to 1 so this means that 1 minus r to the power n is less than epsilon uh, so uh, we, uh, r to the power n cannot be very close to 1 and very close to 0 at the same time and this leads to a contradiction uh, this leads to a contradiction 
for example if choosing uh, epsilon to be less than half uh, and eta to be epsilon by 2 so we have that uh, 1 minus r to the power n modulus is less than half so r to the power n uh, lies in the right half of the unit interval so r to the power n is here somewhere however however uh, this means that this implies that r to the power the modulus of r to the power n is greater than half and uh, so r to the power n is less than 1 by 4 is a contradiction so just by using this property so eta is 1 by 4 uh, eta is less than 1 by 4 so uh, it cannot lie in both halves of the um, unit interval so we have r to the power n here as well and r to the power here as well and this is not possible so it is a contradiction and so we see that it is not equicontinuous at um, at x equal to 1.